Hi, good day. This is Greg Lewis, the city manager here in Lebanon. And I'm very pleased today that we're going to have our police department here during our, our show today. Uh, we're going to, we're going to um, uh, give an opportunity to highlight a couple of special programs we have and special functions we have. And uh, I, have, I have with me uh, Officer Scott Rathbone. And we're going to talk about what is called uh, RAD, which is the, um, and I, I believe that that RAD, uh, it's a, it, it always stands for something. And this is Rape, uh, Rape Aggression Defense Program. Defense Program. And I, I've heard really good things about it. Okay. I was talking to both uh, Chief Alexander before he left, and then, of course, Chief Smith. And I've had good comments from members of the community about having this offering mm. of this opportunity. But before we get into that a little bit, Scott, I want you, as I do all the time when people come on the program, to give a little bit about your, your name and your background and, your, and basically you, your, your official duties and how, do you get, how did you get where you are today in the police department? Uh, sure thing. Uh, full of Scott Rathburn. I've been with the police department since 1989. Um, hired on as a basic patrol officer, worked rotating shifts for a number of years. Uh, during my time with the PD, I worked in detectives. I had two stints in detectives, one as a patrol officer and the other as a corporal in detectives. Came back to the road as a road sergeant, again, back to, back to shift work. I uh, got promoted to lieutenant, was the lieutenant over the patrol division for a while, then went back to detectives as a detective lieutenant. Uh, my current position now is an administrative lieutenant. Uh, tend to handle things more behind the scenes uh, that keeps the, keeps the PD rolling. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like cruisers and uniforms and training requirements uh, and uh, or being a RAD instructor. That's really great, that's really great. Um, so you've been with the, with the police quite a long time now. You know, you've, you've probably, probably had, now we have 20 years, been 2009. Yeah, 24. So 24, yeah, that's, well that's really congratulations and um, thank you for your service to us. Thank so you. We really appreciate this type of effort by, these, by the quality of officers we have in our police department, which well, you know, I, I really, every time I watch the police at work and I, and I receive the reports and I see them, and I, I think what a great thing is to have our police department. I just compliment you and compliment our officers again. I always try to do that when we're thank you. on the show with our police. Um, now let's get into the program a little bit. Sure. Um, how did it start? Uh, and, and I guess we're going back to the roots of where it is. When did it start? The um, how did, program how did in general started in 1989 in a, in a nationwide sense. Okay. Um, the founder, Larry Nadu, began this program in the late, like I said, late 80s, early 90s to provide a viable option for self-defense for the woman who's attacked. Oh. Um, RAD has a number of different classes. Uh, the class we teach the most here is the basic physical defense, mm -hmm. and that's okay. for women only. Mm -hmm. um, RAD in Lebanon started, I want to say, in the early 2000s, early to mid-2000s with um, Officer Chris Davis, um, who's since left us, but in that time we've brought in a, a few other instructors, myself, Corporal Jerry Brown, uh, Special Officer Peter Began are also RAD instructors. I started with RAD in 2006. Okay, good. Now, um, I guess we start about, let's first talk about the program and describe mm -hmm. what the program consists of. The program consists of four courses. Each, uh, each meeting runs about three hours. Uh, the first one, you take care of your paperwork, uh, registrations, and then there's a discussion format um, based off a of PowerPoint, and it talks about basic personal safety. Um, you know, keeping yourself safe at home, safe when you travel. Um, nothing in there is necessarily all that advanced. Uh, what I like to tell students is, after a while, you you do your day to day, you kind of go go places without thinking about your safety. This just brings those things back to the forefront of your mind to keep your head up and look around and see what's going on around you. Um, you know, park in well lit areas, things that aren't new to people. Mm. Um, just a reminder. A reminder. A reminder. Yeah. It's the, uh, the classes after that, uh, two and three especially, are far more physically based. They're, they're wearing a gym. Uh, okay. Normally the, the Carter Community Building gym is the one we've used most frequently. Oh, okay. uh, and that is learning techniques. This is learning striking techniques, uh, learning kicks, learning some escapes, and it's repetition. Uh, students will get to strike, uh, striking pads 
bags that are held by instructors and we'll go through repetition with each of the exercises then we'll learn combinations of those exercises uh -huh. uh, the final class is uh, a simulation mm. the students will get a chance to run through three or four scripted scenarios with aggressors that are suited um, we actually the instructors take turns being aggressors I've got a class mm -hmm. ending next week that it will be my turn in the suit um, we go through the scripted scenarios and the students will get a chance to practice what they've learned they'll get a chance to strike somebody yeah um, and we try to tell them stick with the rad techniques that you've learned in the last few classes um, and from student feedback that's been a huge payoff they really found their confidence increasing mm -hmm. going from a, a more static striking a pad to going to that simulation towards the end of the event and so all together they uh, how many was it uh, well, I was hearing three or four sessions four sessions they run about mm -hmm. three hours a piece um, usually rent it comes in right about 10 to 12 hours total time mm -hmm. and and what day and time and do they, uh, I mean, are these classes offered? Over the, over the course of um, offering RAD, we've been really good about mixing it up. Um, we've done one class a week for four weeks. We've done, uh, I've, I did one Saturday class. We did a Saturday morning at the Hanover Street School. Um, right now, our current class is running two days a week from 5.30 to 8.30. Um, we also will offer it if people have a group that needs something specific. I encourage them to contact us and we can work out something scheduling wise. That's, that's great. Um, so in, uh, maybe we go to some of the basic about to, to get into the class. Um, it sounds like you individual can get in. It also sounds like groups mm -hmm. can engage in discussions on how it might be, ha you know, Definitely. how the group you know, might become involved with the mm -hmm. program. Yeah, we've, we've encouraged groups. We've done, um, we've done RAD programs for people at uh, Mascoma Bank, at various branches of the bank. Um, businesses, if they've got a group of people that are interested, encourage them to call us and we'll be happy to put something together for them. Our last few classes have been pretty much word of mouth tends to fill our classes. Um, we encourage, whether it's mothers and daughters, uh, this time of year specifically, we get a big push from parents of graduating senior oh, high okay. school women getting ready to go to college mm -hmm. that really want this, uh, this knowledge before they head off to school. Okay, okay. And um, I guess in terms of, are, are they giving written materials? Is it, is it yes. more is it a classroom? Uh, it starts in, and in that first class, they're provided the instruction manual. Oh, okay. And the manual is theirs to keep, um, and as well as a free practice and return policy. Okay. And that's, a, that's something done nationwide through RAD. Okay. Um, we've had students come back for a number of classes and always, always invite returning students to come back. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Um, and the feedback you received from, I mentioned, you mentioned some of that, the feedback you received from those participating, um, what kind of feedback do you receive from people that have gone through the program? Uh, the feedback we've received in terms of uh, either on the evaluation forms or direct to us has been very positive. Um, they found that their confidence in their ability to defend themselves has increased by taking the course. Um, right from the first course, I tell them, this is a question I'm going to ask you at the end of the class if you feel that you've increased in your confidence okay. um, and if you obviously if you haven't we've done something wrong um, but we get real good feedback the the simulation at the end really helps to sink in mm -hmm. the idea that it's a controlled safe environment but it, it shows them a little bit of a stress response we yes. have students mm -hmm. very frequently say I was nervous when I came in but once we got going they felt more comfortable with it yeah that's good um, now, is it a year-round program? Is, uh, is, it, is the offering occur by seasons? You know, every um, under, uh, you know, availability how, how uh, more than anything. Availability of a gym space in particular. Oh, okay. Um, so we tend to work around the basketball season. Uh, okay. We start about April or May, and we'll hold classes just about monthly through uh, September or October. Um, and again, those are the ones that we'll do. We open up. They had to, you know, any and all callers uh, will put out press releases. We also put out notices on the website as well and encourage people to call in and, and say, 
you know, that they'd like to participate, and we cap each class at about 20. Okay. Um, that, that's just the limit size-wise and instructor-wise. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 would be we be willing to come out and maybe talk to a group about this? I mean, it sounds like we, we would because it talked about the groups contacting us. But mm -hmm. do we ever go out and talk to people about you know this program? We've uh, done is, is um, that? we've done health fairs. Uh, been invited to a health oh, uh, health fair hypotherm in the past. Um, we've also done a class uh, for hypotherm employees. Oh, you did. Their yeah. wellness coordinator had contacted us. Mm -hmm. uh, done a number of classes for Dartmouth Hitchcock employees directly up at the hospital. Uh, I was actually just in contact with uh, a program coordinator up there, making sure they remembered we're there and, and that the offer is open if they want to host us up there. Is the program that, being, uh, that we're engaged in part of it? You mentioned earlier, but that it became a, it started as a national. There's a there's a national program with regard. Is That's it still right. kind of a, is it still running uh, on a, on a wide scale in terms of country? Yes, the Rad uh, Rad runs throughout the United States, Canada, and is starting to to gain more popularity even overseas. Um, Rad tends to be in our area. Police departments and colleges are what tend to have the most interest. Mm -hmm. um, the RAD website has a program locator that will find you a program anywhere in the country. So there actually is a, a RAD website nationally. Yes. Yes. So if somebody was even leaving the area, you know, if they were, if they were, that there's still opportunity, they could find out where it is. Yes, and we do encourage that with our students that say, oh, I'm going off to school in Massachusetts or, or you know, in the West Coast. Yes. Say, check rad-systems.com and look at the program locator. That's 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 nice. That's really great. Um, um, is this well accepted in the pro in the in the community? Do you think the program? Our like I said, our feedback has been great. Uh, we find our classes fill strictly with word of mouth. As soon as we say we have a class opening up, um, our administrative assistant gets phone calls. She'll get calls numerous times a week, uh, saying, "Oh, I've got more people that are interested in a rad class," and then we look to open up more dates. Um, going back to uh, becoming a rad trainer and a rad instructor, uh, how, how do you, how does one like in your circumstances, or any of the other officers that might be part of the program, how do they become qualified to become instructors of the it's rad a program? Or thirty-hour course okay. um, that and in, uh, a certified instructor trainer is the one that runs the course from rad. My instructor trainer happening from the Bangor Police Department. Okay. Um, and the instructor course I had was in Burlington uh, with about 15 others. And it's a varying group. Any woman that wants to be an instructor can. Yes. Any, any male that is in the armed services or in law enforcement can be an instructor. Any male outside of those fields requires a background check that's done through RAD's home office. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Um, and our, our program right now, we're doing in the Carter, uh, the Carter, Carter Community, Carter building, community building. Um In our last minute or so, uh, what do you think about the future of the program? Uh, where do you think it's going to go in the future here in the, our last minute? I think in, so? the, in the future is we can, we seem to be able to fill these programs. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as we can keep students interested and keep people coming in, more than happy to keep offering them. And again, we're willing to mix up the locations and the times to get the information out because we believe it is important information for every woman to have. That's really great. It, since you've been with the program for a while and our closing seconds, um, have you seen differences in what, how the offering is in the program or has it been consistently about the same? Um, it has been a little bit up and down, um, but the last, every class so far in 2013, we've reached our cap before the class starts. So we've, we've filled the capacity. That's great. That's great. Well, I have a daughter in the 20s. I certainly would encourage her to do that. I hope mm -hmm. people, as you, the residents out there and all of you, of whatever age you may be, um, it is appropriate that when you have your daughters are going away to college and mm -hmm. things like that to think of these things. Um, but also I think it's just a matter of day. We, I, all, everyone in, in the situations that we face, helping build confidence, because maintaining, I suppose, one's presence of mind in, in stressful situations, is, and if you have some confidence, it will enable you to perhaps not even involve yourself in the actual com, uh, actual conflict, but, exactly. but rather just dealing with stress. Correct. Well, I want Scott, I want to thank you. Uh, okay. The program is great. I, I commend the program to all the residents in the community, and it sounds like everyone just takes it up as soon as they hear about it, so that's really good. 
good of us, and uh, it's another part of our kind of empowering ourselves to to live in a in a world that is a complex world, and we have to take our steps to to um, be confident and um, do things uh, together by by preparing with each other and supporting each other. So thank you, Scott. Very good. Thank you. And with that, we uh, will wish Scott and his program very well. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. This is Greg Gloss again, uh, City Manager. Uh, what, here, we're, another aspect of our police department, a very critical aspect. Um, these are all important functions in our department, but, but if anyone ever called the number uh, for emergency assistance, our dispatch center it just, is, really does a, a really wonderful, wonderful job. And, and, and I talked to um, Chief Gary Smith, and we were talking about what we should have on the show, and we definitely thought we should have the dispatch center on the show and have some discussion about uh, how that operates so people can kind of hear from what's uh, their, their point of view of what's behind the, 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 that line when somebody is talking to them. And so we have, uh, we have one of our great dispatchers here, Shelby Fry. And Shelby, as I said before, let's uh, talk a little bit about yourself. How, uh, what's your background and how did you get to become a, into a dispatch center, be a dispatcher? Are you called a dispatcher, by the way? Uh, dispatcher or a communication specialist. A uh, communication we specialist, go okay. go either way. Um, I never saw myself in public safety. It was just kind of a fluke on my end. I was going to college for graphic design and I got into a, uh, I was a victim of a major cra uh, crash or traffic accident, actually right here in Lebanon. Wow. Hmm. And uh, it kind of sidelined me from college. And when I had to get back into the working field, I found the police department. They had an opening and uh, an actual family friend suggested it. And I did my testing and ah. I tested well for it. and kind of just slid into it. That's great. great. And so how long have you been doing it? 10 years, going on 11. Well, that's, that's really great. Thank yeah. you for your service. Thank you. We appreciate that. What kind of, how, do you, how does one become a dispatcher um, or a communication specialist? Well, if you're interested in becoming um, a communication specialist or a dispatcher, you definitely need the skill of multitasking because there is a lot going on. Um, and you, to, to an extent, you know, you have to have some computer knowledges and uh, knowledge and some phone skills, and you certainly have to have customer service skill. That's a, a big thing that people don't necessarily think of. We're dealing with very angry people or very upset people, and you really have to be able to talk to those people and connect with them a certain way to make them feel at ease and help them in their time of need, because that's why they're calling you. That's great. Do you have to go through some training, or periodic training, or refreshers, in, or how's that? Well, for dispatch, when you start, if you're not already, uh, if you're not coming from another agency, yes. um, you have to go through the testing, the background testing. Um, we basically have to go through the entire process with the exception of the physical that the cops have to do, the yes. officers. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to go through the oral boards and um, the testing. Um, and then once you are hired on, um, you have to go through a background check as well because we deal with a lot of um, information that is not public. You know, we have FBI computers and that okay. kind of stuff. Okay. So you do have to pass a background check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so once you're hired in, you start um, with a communication training officer, which I'm one, so I would be able to take on any new hiree. And you have to work with them for three months side by side and we have this little umbilical cord we call it and so i'll be wearing a headset and the new person would be wearing a headset and they'd start by just listening to how we take phone calls okay how we answer the phone how we direct people that kind of stuff um, eventually it would switch and then they would start taking calls while i listen to them on the other you know how they converse right and then um then they would switch to radio i would start on the radio and they would sit beside me and listen and take notes and then we'd switch. And so once their three months are up and they've been, there's an evaluation process and yeah. once we feel that they're fit, that they could handle it, they then have to be with somebody for three months. They can't work solo. They, yeah. they have to yeah. have a partner there because there are a lot of things to learn mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm still learning after. Yeah, I, I can't imagine all the things you, you know, that could come in there about how to react to or how to respond or what information you need or don't need. And every day is different and every caller is different uh -huh. and every situation is different. And I, like I said, I'm still learning. It, it amazes me. I go in every day and learn something new. So It's really amazing. Would you describe for our residents about what, what's in the communication center? What, what's that? What is, if we could describe it, a picture of it, 
what would it be looking like? Well, for, for Lebanon Dispatch, we dispatch for police, fire, and EMS. So we have two consoles, two primary consoles. So um, we have two dispatchers on, with the exception of Midnight's, who we only have a single dispatcher on. So we have a, um, we like to kind of describe it as the Enterprise, the deck of the Enterprise yeah. for all you. I mean, men there, it's somewhat like that. It feels like a little bit. Yep. Um, so because we have so many computers, we have a, a very large desk. Um, we have our radio console, which is all computerized. And then we have our computers that talk to the road unit's computers. And then we have our spots computers, which are the FBI computers. Plus, we have a security computer that watches who comes in and out of the building with their little key card. Um, and we have a huge surveillance system that we can monitor the outside of the police department with. Um, so there, there are two identical stations, one on each side of the room. And directly to the middle of us, there um, is our fire alarm box, our digitizer, which takes in um, fire alarm systems. Wow. So if somebody goes and pulls that yeah. fire alarm, yeah. we receive it behind us. Um, we have a little kitchenette so that we, because um, if we're solo, we don't leave that room. We're there 24-7, 365. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a little kitchenette with a microwave and a sink and a, a fridge, and we also have a bathroom. And in that bathroom, we have a radio and we have a phone. Because mm -hmm. if you're alone on midnights and somebody calls, mm -hmm. we have to answer. Complete access. Well, that's something I know we're going to upgrade. I know we're going to recommend upgrading the consoles yes. this coming year. So that will be upgraded to another. Uh, I guess our current consoles are running out of uh, because they're not going to repair them anymore because <laughs> of the, the parts and things. So it's like everything in technology is moving forward. So yeah. it's even going to look, continue to look more and more like uh, like, in the, like the Enterprise. Um, now, the other day, uh, I thought we, we'd talk a little bit about situations you encounter is so many different types and every call is different. I know that there's times where people will call and then the question, you know, the other day we had some persons involved in the river and then they had to be uh, persons, first responders needed to get out there to them to provide some assistance when they, they got into some difficulty in, in, the, in the river, but it, but it wasn't an easy place to find. I mean, I, I I am new, uh, I'm in my third year, but still I, I find it that it's easily to get turned around in uh, the terrain we have, the rivers, and the, and if, if people are out there and, and maybe they're not familiar with the, either the river or the forest or wherever they're at, it's hard to find things. How did that, when that, ha when that circumstances happen, or, or similar type of circumstances, what takes place? How, how do you deal with that? You get a call. And does it come on a cell phone to you? I mean, because there's no telephone lines in some of these places. Right. So. Yeah, this one, um, I, was, I was lucky enough to take this call, and, and the person did dial 911, which was, in the end, very, very useful to, to Lebanon Dispatch. Um, so they, as you said, they, they're out on a trail. It's, it's hard to determine how far you've gone, how far you've got left. So this nice bystander saw these people um, stuck in the river, and called, and it, it was difficult her, for her to tell me exactly where she was because, like you said, you're out in the middle of the woods. So one of my first questions are, you know, what can you see? Can you describe what you can see to me? So she was able to describe that she could see a bridge and this this type of stuff. So after I got the fire department and the police department headed, uh, they went out in the utility truck on the, in the pickup, so they were able to go right down the rail trails. But by keeping her on the phone, I'm able to describe what she's seeing how far she thinks she is, what landmarker she's gone past. In this case, um, the Packard Covered Bridge was a good landmarker. Mm. So the fire department was able to use those types of things to try to more pinpoint where she was. But luckily, because she called 911, 911 was able to GPS her coordinates. Oh, okay. They gave with her the coordinates. With the phone. With her phone, yeah, with her cell phone. So they gave us the coordinates, and we were able to type them into Google Map and and get an even closer location of roughly where she was. So we were able to say she looks like she's probably behind, I think, Chamber Circle you know, on this side. So um, my caller was um, not involved so much as she was just a good citizen helping. Yes. So her emotions were relatively calm, and mm -hmm. she was able to talk to me, mm -hmm. whereas if it would have been 
a parent or you know a family yes. member, it would have been a completely different mm -hmm. outcome, I, more than likely, because they're more emotionally involved. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, to me, that would be difficult when people come in in those types of situations where they're they're intimately involved with the, the situation, uh, and either relationship-wise with the people involved in it, or they themselves are the ones that are being involved in it. And it, it seems so high, high, high amount of stress. I mean, I'm just not knowing how that feels. But how, you know, how do you, as a, as a communication technician and specialist, how, and and are just working this dispatch? How do you handle that? I mean, what 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 what's the what's the methodology for approaching that when it comes on the line like that? Cause it's it can be very very stressful because you have this person on the end of the phone mm -hmm. just panicked or you you know they're in this horrible situation and so you're you're taking everything that you can and giving it to them and then you're getting your road units started so police or fire or EMS or or whatever and now you have all your road units asking you questions that are pertinent to to what what is going on so you have to keep your ear on this person your your sympathy with this person but then you have to go back and maintain a professionalism on the radio. You don't want to sound scared or concerned or anything. It's just professional with the officer. Let's, you know, so you're switching from this gear to this gear very, very quickly and back again. Um, and as far as it being stressful normally, mm -hmm. thank, thank goodness we don't get a ton of um, very, very stressful calls all yeah. at once. All it's at once. normally, We'll get one or two in an mm -hmm. evening, and mm -hmm. um, we have a good group of people that work with us that mm -hmm. we can kind of um, relax and mm -hmm. talk to, and we've all been through that situation, so we can all kind of... So as a group, you can provide each other with the support yeah. in, in these kind of circumstances, which are always difficult. Sounds like to me that you need a lot of, you talk about multitasking, and it seems like that also strikes me as how adaptable you have to be, yeah. considering the the human condition of what you're going to be hearing or seeing or yes. reacting to. Um, so in terms of the, in terms of the, you know, the top, t <laughs> the top 10, the top three list or two list or four list, uh, the kinds of things you need as a uh, person working in the communication center to help the public, what, what kind of things do you have to, if you had to summarize like your top that features, I'm, yeah, that from your I'm, point. Yeah. That I need How to do, do or that yeah. I'm looking for well, from them? Well, that's first from you and then from them. Um, as a communication specialist, you definitely, as we talked about, definitely want to be a multitasker. But you also, um, you want to be a, very centered. You want to be able to, you're not going to explode at the person yelling at you or yes. you're not going to break down and cry because they're crying. You're going to be able to just, um, I guess, be strong and, you know, know when... When it's done, it's done, and you can take a break and relax. And yeah. and while it's a part of the job, <laughs> it's not a part of your life. Yeah. You can you can leave it at work. Leave it at work. And and continue. Now, as far as people calling in, because I was we were talking earlier before the show began about you know people have a hard time and, and when you're in a stressful situation. But what are some of the things that would be most um, useful for people to have in mind? ahead of time before something like this happens to being prepared in terms of what you say well it's certainly not um, you want to get the information to us as quickly as possible and mm -hmm. we're trying to get it from you as quickly as possible because that's how we're going to get somebody to you the quickest so you may think that our questions are silly or not necessary but they probably are we're not just asking them to hold a conversation we're asking them because they're pertinent pieces of the puzzle and so your dispatchers really tries to be in control of the conversation so that because you're in a bad spot something's wrong something's happened so if you allow us to just take control and ask you the questions um, you'll be more focused on answering them than worried about giving us information so one of the things might be is the first thing is to be is when the circumstances is take a breath and listen Yes. to what is asked of you Absolutely. and try to respond to the best of your ability to what has been asked of you. Absolutely. That's a perfect way to put it. Okay. Because th I think that's, that's a good thing to try to, it's really difficult. I it's, can't imagine how difficult it would be. Um, in our last minute or so, 
Um, are there important points that you think that we haven't covered today that we, we shouldn't mention about our, our, our communication operation, our service, our, our customers that we provide help to? Um, things that you just jump out to you that... Um, a lot of the times uh, um, we certainly understand that you're having an emergency, um, that something is, has gone wrong or you need help in some way. We certainly understand that and we try our best to get you the help as quickly as possible. But we would like people to remember that we deal with an entire city. So we have to be able to put emergencies in order and figure out who needs the most help the fastest and first. And so just remain calm and uh, you know, and know that we have your call and we'll be there as soon as possible. And we're always there for you 24-7. Yeah, 24-7. Call us anytime. 24-7. Um, well, I think, I, I, I think everyone here, and uh, as we listen, uh, uh, to our, 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 our person in this batch. And uh, we really are so ha happy to have her and her colleagues there to help us in times where we, we really need that special uh, emergency response and assistance. Uh, thank you for that today and thanks back to everyone in this batch. Thank you, thank you. in particular for your service. I, I think that um, if, if I ever fall in the river, I, I, I hope that you're on, you're on when, you. they, when they come to get me. I hope you don't fall in the river. <laughs> I stay away from the rivers. <laughs> I, I, I find you stay away from water. <laughs> I'm a Kansan. We didn't have any water in Kansas, so <laughs> I'll stay on top of the mountain. Um, anyway, so we want to thank everyone today. Thank you for being here. Thanks for our police department. Thanks for all the work they do. And thanks to Dispatch. And um, uh, special thanks to... All our police officers are serving and protecting us today. Thank you. Thank you.